And so in 2011, we want to readdress the packaging subject in the sustainability discussion. And the core of this discussion and this project is to change from fossil-based plastic material for yogurt cups to renewable-based plastic, which is in this case PLA, polylactic acid. So by managing this move into plastics from plants, actually we, three, we see three major benefits. The first one is the saving of fossil resources. The secondly, uh, the reduction of the greenhouse gases. And the third point is that with the introduction of PLA, we want to start up a closed loop recycling from PLA, post-consumer, into PLA and packaging again. So, <clears throat> while we managed the change from conventional plastic materials to PLA, we also had an eye on all the other packaging components of the Danone Activia brand. As our partner for ecological consulting, uh, we joined with the WWF for this project to have a look on all the different packaging details and to see where we still can further improve. So uh, the core of the project is the cup which is made from PLA, but also we change for this brand the leads into lead material without aluminium. <coughs> we changed already 50% of our range. Now we expect in the second semester of 2011 to exchange the second half of the volumes. And all the pickup, the corks, and also the trays are made either from recycled papers or from FSC papers. <coughs> On this slide, you see the fabrication of PLA, and I guess I repeat a little bit what Professor Andres demonstrated already before. So, <coughs> The source for our plastic materials is not oil anymore. Actually, in this case, the source of the material is solar energy in the combination with CO2. By the photosynthesis process, the plant generates actually carbon hydrates. In this case, it's corn which is produced, feeding corn. From the key feeding corn, there is an extraction of vegetable starch. This vegetable starch is then transformed into sugars. The sugars are fermented into lactic acid, then polymerized into polylactic acid in the granule from which we produce the yogurt cups. And I would say this chart, it's the main chart of my presentation today because I will refer to it later on when I speak about the ecological aspects of the project, when I speak about the life cycle assessment research. This is the situation today. And I want to address already here that the life cycle assessment research, which we demonstrate later on, they mirror this situation. Our vision for the project is another one. Our vision is to proceed further <coughs> tomorrow to produce the starches, either from agricultural residuals materials, so not to use food or feeding materials anymore, Either we can imagine these agricultural residual materials or other plants which are not used for food production today. And the second big step which we want to start is the closed loop recycling from PLA into lactic acid and then into PLA again. And uh, as some of you could read in the press already, uh, we would be happy to welcome anyone joining our trip with PLA and bio-based materials so to rise the volumes of PLA on the market. Today, uh, we already started pilots for the PLA recycling. The amounts today on the market are small. They are so small that the sorting of a separate PLA fraction uh, is not manageable for the time being. So in the future, if other producers join us and use PLA, uh, we hope to achieve quickly the volume of the PLA, so to close this loop for the recycling. Here is a chart about the end-of-life scenario for PLA for yogurt cups. And also, as Professor Andres mentioned before, there are a lot of different options for bio-based bio materials for the end-of-life. Uh, for us, it's clear today and also in the future the collection of the yogurt cup needs to be managed by the yellow bin, by a proper collection system, which end then in a sorting system. On the composting 
for PLA yogurt cups, we don't recommend it. Actually, for yogurt cup, we see any other kind of recovery or recycling option is more ecological uh, effective than the composting. And for the future, you see it, the future potential. We plan to have the closed loop recycling of PLA by a separate PLA sorting stream. The cracking into lactic acid is the base for new PLA. As I said before, first pilots are started. The results keep us quite optimistic and we hope to proceed quickly in this direction. Here I want to give you some facts of what we managed during this project in terms of uh, life cycle assessment and also in terms of sustainability certification. So uh, we have a complete LCA which you also find on the internet um, which compares the PLA cup with the past polystyrene cup. It's a life cycle assessment of the full cradle to grave assessment of the product and it confirms the reduction of 25% greenhouse gases and 43% saving of fossil resources. And here I come back to the slide which I had before. These are the values for the situation today. It's not including uh, tomorrow's opportunities for the source of the starches or for the source of the materials which could be different. It's not including the PLA recycling scenarios. So it's a very conservative picture today. What we learned during this project is that the LCA is a very good tool to indicate the analysis of the situation today and to advise us in which directions we should further proceed to develop the project. But besides that, we learned also in the collaboration with WWF that we also need to do a little bit more in terms of the sustainability certification of the agro-sourcing of the materials. So we set up a process to install the so-called ISCC certification. It's the International Sustainability and Carbon Certification. And it confirms the sustainability of the comb production and the chain of custody up to the filling of the Activia cups. The ISCC generally uh, guarantees the farming according to environmental and social standards. So protection of environmental valuable areas, fertilizers use according to uh, soil analysis uh, and a lot of other aspects. Besides that, and also I have to address also because we launch our Activia product in Germany, we set up a process to guarantee that the corn for the production of our PLA is GMO free corn. The PLA today is coming from United States as well as the corn is produced in United States. <coughs> so we set up the process with the so-called WLC, Working Landscape Certification, to guarantee that the amount of corn which is needed for our PLA is produced GMO free. <coughs> Second slide, not showing the same facts as the slide before. Uh, of course, on agro-sourced materials, there are other aspects which might not be in favor for bio-based materials today, like, for example, eutrophication or acidification potential. And there we see today that the balance for the PLA is not better than for the polystyrene, but we are convinced today, and also with the learnings from the LCA, that here we need to take a detailed look about which dimensions we speak, also about which dimensions of land use do we speak. So for 65,000 tons of Activia, which we produce today for Danon, Germany, uh, we use 3,500 tons of PLA, and therefore we need 900 hectares of land. So I'm not a farmer, I guess most of you are not a farmer. 900 hectares for me, it's something which I can, cannot understand so good. So I was looking for an example, 900 hectare is a surface of 6.5 by 1.4 kilometer. And this is actually the surface of the Tegernsee in the south of Germany. It is a lake, and this is, and I hope you can see it good, this is the dimension of the agricultural surface which we need for the corn production for the PLA of the biggest fruit yogurt in Germany. And this is also then connected with all the environmental aspects. I put this picture because I want to, to, to hand out something to you 
which we can see and which we can understand in terms of size dimension. So it's not all Germany which we need to plant with corn, it's this area. And that's more or less it for my presentation. Happy to answer any other questions from you.